Um, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting of April 3rd, 2024 at 6.01 p.m. Uh, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and pro provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. So I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, we have public comment. Is there any public comment? Okay. Um, let's just drop down for Selectman's announcements. Uh, did anyone have any Selectman's announcements? I, I just want to say that um, uh, we spent a lovely five hours, Christopher Dunn and um, Megan Suzinski, Christopher Dunn from our office, Megan Suzinski from the Franklin Conservation District, and um, Nick Miller walked Bloody Brook uh, last week, oh. last Thursday. Yeah. And then uh, I drove him around town to all our problematic areas. And uh, he could not believe the amount of water that we have and the problems that people are having. He did talk to some residents like Paul Oshetsky and a few other people and- um, We're coming down right now. Yeah, and so he's he's gonna work on a phased um, plan, a report. He's gonna report to us with a, probably some phased um, activities because you have the Bloody Brook area including Eastern Ave and Grave Street with Cross Street. I mean, Cross Street was just flooded last week. Yeah. So awful. It is again today. And then um, then there's, you know, different areas in the north end of town that we visited, River Road, Wapping Road, all those issues. So anyway, he's going to work on his report and get back to us. Um, the other thing I have to say is I, I had a REPC meeting yesterday and I had invited John um, Devine from, um, who's a fire marshal, uh, to come and talk about the OSHA regulations. It's just a heads up. The comments for the new OSHA regulations have been, for the fire departments, have been extended beyond May. So I'm not asking us to do anything right now because we're overwhelmed, Casey's overwhelmed. But I just want to do a tickler sometime in May. We need to write some comments because if these OSHA requirements go in as written, implemented, they are going to be devastating, more devastating than the police reform bill yeah. for us as a town. Um, because uh, I was concerned when I heard about it um, because, uh, you know, there's, if you have 15, if you respond for 15 events, like combustible events, um, you have to have a, a, a new physical. You have to have a fitness for duty physical, and then you have to have these other physicals. And the, and right now they're like eighteen hundred dollars a per person, yeah. and and um, I so that was I was concerned. And that's why I had reached out to John, um, who I had known from Homeland Security um, committee, you know, years before, and so he came to our meeting and he went over it and it, the turnout gear. I mean, he went. Of course, yeah. he's on top of stuff because he's a fire marshal, state fire marshal. But he went over a long list of stuff, including like turnout gear. Turnout gear right now, you have That's to fair. fit to the person. Mm -hmm. It's good for 10 years. Well, now it's only going to be good for five years. They want it fossil free and they can't even get a price for it. So the, <laughs> I mean, it would be, I don't know, it would end our departments. Yeah. And, and the cost to the taxpayer to try to have a fire department yeah. is huge. And then my concern from an insurance point of view is if all these little fire departments go away, then our, our insurance rates in our home, which are already going up because of climate change losses, are going to be even more devastating uh, rate-wise for those of us that live outside, you know, um, 
villages, centers that have fire hydrants and stuff. Right. So anyway, we the comment period has been extended because there has been a lot of pushback, but we as public officials need to be able to respond. And so I have a list of stuff. We'll send a letter. Mm -hmm. We'll vote it. Okay. I've just got to remember to do this next month. Um, and then uh, I found out we had already voted for to um, send a letter of support to the Ways and Means Committee on Joe and Natalie's right. bill. Emergency. Um, so I just want us to make sure that you um, would vote again because I, I found out on the Homeland Security meeting that it's sitting in Ways and Means and we have to address three things. We have to address um, the MEMA distributing the money. We have to have more money. The governor's bill is only fourteen million instead of two hundred and fifty million. Yeah, fourteen. And then doesn't even cover that one storm. Right, it doesn't even cover that one storm. And then um, it's also the way they're going to distribute it. Right. Um, through, um, you know, the formula. It's it it that needs to be make sure that it is through MEMA with their formulas on actual loss. So we have the three things to address. Um, I can work this out with Casey if if yep. you all support, I support that. You. Yep. Okay. Sure. Thank you. I wanted to say I um I had um wanted to thank the people who came together and did the Narcan training. Um, was it last Monday? No, last Tuesday. Was it last Tuesday? Yes. Yeah, that was oh, really I forgot good. about that. Yes, we had excellent. an excellent training. I got here late, but um, but I, I was able to um at least get a supply and um. I assume there will be more supplies at some point. Or uh, yes, we more. can we can do the training. It's just that we're so busy, we probably won't do it yeah. in April. Right. But I will in, make sure that we do like another that. training in um, May yeah. because, I you know, it's, it's really valuable. I think it's and really important. Yeah, I and people really like so, it with other meetings. But yeah, that's good. I um I probably won't take a Narcan up to my house on the hill because I don't live near anyone. But right. But certainly, I'd like to learn how to use it. Yeah, and then I do have a couple of short things. Sure, sure. So, Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to thank Jennifer Remillard for arranging to uh, have Congressman Jim McGovern visit the senior center today to talk Great. about uh, issues of concern to the membership. And I also wanted to mention that uh, the 1821 uh, temporary library space is um, significantly improved. All of the chairs and everything that were in the space that the library is going to occupy have been removed. Their cleaning is underway and the electrician is coming in to do last minute um, change orders to allow for new electrical outlets uh, near computer stations and uh, to get the Wi-Fi up and running. So Right. No, it looks really. You know nice. what? I, I I really hope um, that people will visit the library in this new location, because it is so beautiful. Um, what has been done, and um, we're just waiting on the island. Uh, Tim has made sure that the flooring is beautiful in the kitchen and the entryway, and it really looks great. And uh, we have handicap accessible bathrooms, and uh, you know that building is going to be lovely. Um, Casey, do we have what's the situation on the relish work? On the relish work we're working i got the um notice of award back with the documents i sent the contract out they're reviewing it now okay so. great well hopefully we will not get too much snow oh. and <laughs> sorry. hopefully we'll not get too much snow we'll get the relishes done and we'll move on the sanctuary because that's so exciting i i'm I just love seeing that building emerge. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's looking great. And I can't thank Tim enough for all the effort he did. And it just, it's just gorgeous. And I agree with Trevor that um, we ought to get to, at some point, painting the steeple so it, yeah. it, it doesn't degrade in the interim. Because it's the, the paint's peeling pretty badly up yeah, there. We definitely so, yeah. need to clean Once that Once the up. relish is fixed, we'll, we'll go on to the next step. Yep. yep. Oh, sure. I can't wait. Um, Board of Health. Um, I'm hoping to get a small grant so that we can um, do some extra trapping uh, in Deerfield for Asian tiger mosquitoes. Um, been a wet year. It's, it's gonna been be a wet brutal, year. Guys. It's going to be bad. It <laughs> and and we need to, to find out how invasive these are. Last so, couple of years they had been dry, but uh, no, not this year. So it's going to be a no, rough. Spring. It's going to be rough. So um, we have a couple minutes. Can we do? Um, have you all had a chance to look at the February 21st minutes? I, I have. I can make a motion to approve the minutes of February 21st, 2024. And I'll second that for discussion. 
is it, oh okay. i just briefly want to suggest that if if ai is causing us to have five page minutes that we might want to <laughs> reconsider how much we want to rely on ai um mm -hmm. because these are so detailed they're that I very could good spend a day <laughs> admiring them they uh, are pretty good i think they should be a little how many pages I think are they the hearing took up a lot of it yeah is it oh, the hearing yeah. Often a hearing will take that's part of it. I'm sure that yeah, yeah. yeah. the that's hearing was significant it, and yeah. there was testimony and and that's good. But um, if they are not completely accurate and they conflict with the recording, then does that create a legal issue for us? Yeah, it could be. So all right. Um, but otherwise, I'm happy. Great. So all right. Second. All right. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Nassai. Okay. Um, make sure Chris doesn't. I mean, he's working on this so hard. So yeah, well, you know, great. I, I don't mean that as a criticism. Is, yeah. <laughs> I just mean that. Yeah, Ooh, please, please. That was one one meeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, next item on the agenda is changing the date for the annual town meeting. Information session. I, um, we, you guys talked about this on yeah. Monday, but this was already on the agenda by the time we got, I, because I we had to we post the agenda on before you guys. Meeting. All right, I'm not around the 18th, and that's fine. But if you can oh, oh, the no. second, that's okay, too. So they talked about it with finance yep. on Monday. Yep. And the 22nd is a holiday. Oh, um, gotcha. It's, oh, it's uh, Passover. No, it's Passover. Uh -huh. So day. the board in its entirety does not have to be there. Correct. Um, no, you can do the SCEMS meeting. Oh, so it's also won't be there. What is the Thursday? Thursday, Thursday the, 18th. the 18th is the SCEMS meeting. So... Wow. It'll be, yeah, Carol and I could go. I mean, we can do it. It's not. What, the information session? Yeah. It's up so to I, you guys. What, I mean, what, the, what's up the we don't have a lot of. Um, The 23rd is the 350th is already scheduled, but we what could maybe flop. Do? We could flop with the 20. We could flop with the. The 18. With uh, the 350th could go to the 20 to the second 22nd maybe. Well, no, because that's a that's a holiday. We're not going to have any meeting that day, right? Well, we weren't. I mean, right. the finance committee is still going to meet. I guess. Yeah, I, I really oh. think we need to be respectful. If we're not going to have a meeting on Christmas, we're not going to have a meeting right. on important early. I agree with that too. It's fine. It's fine. So I'm, that I'm, includes any committee, and you know we're in our 351st year. At yeah. some point. Those meetings need to take a back seat to the other meetings that are yeah. moving forward. Yep. Do you want to do the twenty third? It's up to you guys. I, I'm I'm okay with you guys running without me. I mean, the it's a pretty straightforward is a, meeting. It's the personnel board hearing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, so, I would suggest with the eighteenth. The eighteenth is the night we have I, to deal. I, with. Yep, that's fine. Okay. And I'll try to get scams to, you know, wrap up, move, move, move with alacrity. Okay. That's right. fine. That is fine. Um, that's fine. Casey and I will manage. Yeah, we can. And if I get free, I'll come over. We'll <laughs> talk through most of it. Okay. We'll be able to do it. Um, six fifteen. Okay. Um, continuation. Yeah. Okay. We have the continuation of the um dog hearing. Trevor, do you want to read the dog hearing? Sure. Uh, this is a old notice, but we'll keep going with it. Um. So uh, notice of public hearing, Town of Deerfield, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157, and Town of Deerfield Bylaws, Chapter 60, Section 10, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on February 7th, uh, 2024 at 6.15. We have continued it uh, to today, which is um, April 3rd at 6.15 uh, p.m. in the main meeting room. Uh, Deerfield Town Office Building, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., on the complaint of a nuisance dog housed at 477 Greenfield Road. Parties of direct interest are invited to attend and be heard. This hearing will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room in the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., um, there is a toll-free number if you'd like to attend, 833-548-0276. Um, or the um, the hearing notice and our select board has a um, Zoom link, which you can find on online and uh, click on that. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode, should you need it, is 5700. 
one two will um this hearing is continued thank you trevor yep um we'll open it up is there um have we, we have not received any new complaints is that correct casey well i uh i want to say that we have i we received that one email uh, oh okay that came in on march 3rd um that also stated it uh, had been hours and hours that the dog had been continually barking. So um, he wanted to make sure um, it, it was uh, sent by the same uh, person who had been also notifying us of the of the nuisance for um, for many months. Well, since last April. Um, so uh, just wanted to kind of reiterate uh, to me that and to us that the um, and it was still happening, still going on. So uh, continuing. Other than that, uh, we have checked with uh, the police department. We did not see any other uh, complaints noticed there. We also we were going to take time to check with the police, and we we're going to take time to check with the building uh, the, with the um, dog officer. The dog officer no, um, spoke with our assistant uh, town administrator um, and and said that there uh, he had no new information other than what was listed in the police reports from from the previous times so that he had no other data to add to it okay um so that's kind of where we're at say so, yeah we also got actual physical printouts of the dog complaints correct uh, that yes. the police have re received and yep. we also have yep um a letter received last november from the complainant i believe yep july 3rd and november 1st and then the one march 3rd um was there any um resolution between the two um persons good evening madam chair and the select board i'm having trouble with my camera it's attorney jeremy cohen uh, okay. i'm still working on the video uh, after our last hearing, I reached out to Mr. Thomas Adams. I just had his email, and I did it again. On Mr. Monday. Cohen, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, we're we having interrupt? difficulty hearing you, and you're breaking up your as well. Mike, able to turn up a little bit or speak into the mic better? Uh, is this any better? Much better. Yeah. Much okay. Better. All right. Um, yeah, this is technical difficulty tonight. So after the last hearing. I reached out to Mr. Thomas Adams. I only have his email. I didn't hear back. And I reached out again uh, Monday morning. And I didn't hear back. Are you able to hear that? Yes. Okay. So you had no response from Mr. Thomas Adams uh, after reaching out to him twice. Correct. Okay. We did hear that. Okay. And did you make any suggestions about some reasonable... Um, accommodation for Mr. Adams's concerns, or did you just reach out to talk to him? Uh, I reached out to talk to him. We, as a group, you may recall, talked about a, a few things that maybe could be done last time. He, I wasn't sure that he was receptive, but that's why we we're going to take it offline. But I didn't, in my emails, I didn't give a plan or suggestions. It was just to reach out to call. Okay. So was one of the things you're referencing the idea that you would provide no noise canceling headphones? Um, I think we mentioned at the last meeting that that seems rather um, an unusual uh, request to make to have somebody have to wear noise canceling headphones in their own home. So was that one of the things you're referencing as a possible suggestion? No. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, what were you thinking of possible um so do solutions sure. to well um certainly there the problem here also is that this valley right he lives at the top of this area where noise comes from the valley upward i believe he said so it's the landscape and i suggested that there's certain landscape barriers sound barriers that, that can be put up. I don't know the lay of the land of whether it's trees or, or a certain type of fence. There are sound buffering um, products available. At the time, there wasn't much favorable reception to that by the complainant. Um, but I, are you saying that in front of you, you have, do you have any, any new evidence since the last hearing? 
Well, I, I have a, I have a suggestion since you're talking about that. Um, seeing that the dog um, tends to notice things and, and bark for hours, I was thinking, uh, and as you mentioned, fencing, um, I, I think just this is layman's guess, just laying out what I kind of observe. And I was thinking what may help tremendously is one, either if the dog is kept in the backyard or um, I know that there's arborvitaes in the front where the dogs like to lay probably for shade, feeling of protection there, just, you know, huddling under that, uh, maybe in a hot day or whatever. Um, I was thinking, and then there's a, fr a fence in front of that, but it, it almost seems like this dog tends to be excited by either traffic of the road, you know, people across the road at the store or something like that. And if there was um, either, you know, some sort of bamboo fencing in front of that area, or uh, I'm not sure about noise canceling fencing, I'm not sure what you mentioned about that, but I, I almost feel like it's um, it, it, it's something that the dog kind of just latches on to activity and just incessantly barks on. I, I don't see it as being all the dogs. I think it's one dog in particular that does this. And um, I wonder if if shading their, you know, kind of creating a blind spot to what's happening might help reduce the um, anxiety or whatever the dog might be feeling or, or wanting to just bark. Um, it might It might help uh, the situation and it might be an economical way around it. You know, so one thought is either have the dog out back, then, then the dog doesn't bark as much, um, you know, uh, at what's going on in the sure. front of the house, the noise kind of gets blocked by the house and it's not so much, you know, echoing up the Valley. I understand it is, it is hard to adjust those acoustics from across the Valley. Um, I'm just trying to think of ways that maybe the dog could not be excited as much and either, you know, if it was in the back of the house, it may still bark at things, but it may not be as as obtrusive to to people living on the other side, kind of having that noise, you know, bounce up the hill. Uh, so e either that or, you know, first trying maybe some fencing in front that were that was kind of like blinding fencing, either, you know, natural bamboo or some, some sort of kind of thing that just allows the dog not to see everything that's going on and react to it. That that was just a thought of mine. It might be an easy economical solution that okay try and you know take a first step at trying to alleviate the the issue and for that we may have to hear from kate because if these dogs have a particular function for her they're um or this dog i believe livestock protection so i don't know if moving them or relocating them <clears throat> but she can speak to that but i i just want to follow up on my question since the last hearing do you have any additional information, videos, proof, anything? Was yes, anything uh, supplied? Well, I mean, uh, I myself stopped on the way home one day just to, you know, hey, is this still happening? Is this, you know, I pulled in across the street, rolled down my window, just randomly one day, just popped in and sure enough, you know, barking and barking and barking. So, okay. uh, you know, but I, do I'm not there all the time. I just randomly stopped one day just out of the blue. Um I also got a, a letter from, you know, from the complaint that, that again, it was on March 3rd after our hearing still happening. So yeah, it is still happening. It's obvious it's happening. So it's, uh, we're, we're looking at searching ways with you uh, to find, to find a way to kind of mitigate that some. So um, it's, it's obvious that it's happening. We're not, you know, we're not looking to find out, oh, is this still happening or does it happen at all? Or we're looking for evidence. It's clear it happens. It's clear it's annoying and a nuisance. Uh, so we're trying to find, you know, simple ways to try and make it um, okay. affordable, you know, affordable for everybody and, and just to lessen, lessen the. Lessen I understand the that. And and I, I agree we could work, toward, work towards that, except at the end of the last hearing, it was there were two of you who said, wait a second, no videos, no pictures, no recordings, no police reports. Any of the times that the police or the animal control went to the house, we have nothing on that. So I'm saying at that time, you, you continued the hearing because you, as one quote was, I, I can't make a decision. There's no, based off the evidence here. So what's changed between then and now, because if there is any new evidence or reports, it hasn't been shared with me and I haven't seen it tonight. 
Well, I, well, I can tell you for myself that I, I witnessed it. So, I mean, it's it's obvious. I, I mean, are you are you suggesting, Jeremy, uh, that that is not happening? No, but I'm just suggesting. Um, I think more than just. I mean, at the last, so the only new thing though is you're telling me is you you witnessed it, but we were going to canvas. I thought some of the businesses because he said it happens day and night. Okay. So I'm just saying if. If it, what it did not, so there's nothing new. It's just you witnessed it. I understand that. I, I believe new. that. And another letter of a complaint. Are I you mean, offering to let us go and videotape and record right. near the property? Is that what you're suggesting we should do? I mean, because if you're authorizing us to do this, we, we were trying to respect the right. owner of the property because she's complained about that. So if you're authorizing us to have the police or uh, somebody to go sit and record, we can do that. I was just looking for a continuation of the last hearing, which ended with everybody saying, okay, let's get more information if this is happening. That's that's so that my plan tonight was saying, all right, what new information do they have? But that's fine. I was the one something's that, changed. changed. Something's I was one changed. of the people that asked for this. And yes, we did. We, we have in our hands tonight the complaints that were issued last year. And um, we also received an, another email from the complainant, okay. and Mr. McDaniel, randomly stopped and heard the dog barking so, so can you can you understand though how my job would be a little easier tonight if i had those complaints with me so i could see it because nothing new has come into me so that's why i don't know what you have and so it, i'm at a little bit of a disadvantage i'll accept what you have in your hands as being complaints about the same is it about the dog barking from mr the same person mr joel thomas adams yeah, I think okay. I think we're here to find a solution, right? The least obtrusive solution, because we want to respect the resident, uh, and we want to respect the, the complainant. So we're trying to find a way that uh, that you'll work with us, so that we don't have to do something more dramatic. And 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 the whole idea is to try and find some way to work with us. You know, my thought would be again a, a, a blinding fence, something that is not a. You know, I, I'd love to see the dog in the backyard. I'm not moving to that at the moment. I'm saying it's fenced in. We've asked for that because of the dangerous dog issue. But this is all about the nuisance. And we okay. we, we feel like that the um, a, a blinding of the area where they could still have the shade of the trees and, and all of that. It might okay. be that first step of kind of tamping down what the dog sees and gets excited about all the time. All right, so it makes sense I, from a, one I, second, Kate, one second. Yeah. That makes sense, especially from a dog behavioral point of view. So I appreciate that you're thinking that and suggesting that since I don't know the lay of the land as well as Kate, we'll hear from her, okay? Um, Kate, so so I, 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 I appreciate when Mr. Adams' window sits looking right down on us. And I think to Jeremy's point, there is a beautiful noise funnel that goes right into his window. I do not disagree with anybody here that says, you know, when my dogs see a stranger or something like that, they have something to say. They are livestock guardian dogs. I have taken a tremendous amount of efforts over the last months to say, what if I change the location of my dogs during the day, at night, or whatever else? I have locked my dogs. We have a beautiful dog house that we built that is up on stilts that has windows and sits behind the arborvitae. And I have literally locked my dogs in there. And when they bark, they bark. Unfortunately, to your suggestion, what I understand is, is that no matter the massive arborvitae, the, the wooden walls, the all of the efforts, the noise that comes off of my property goes right into Mr. Adams' window. We have heard no other complaints from the businesses or any other residents that live on that road, right? And I have listened to my dogs and I can hear them sometimes when I walk in downtown De Old Deerfield. A bark in this valley carries a long, long way. The reality of it is Mr. Adams would like me to go away and this problem to go away. I am in absolute agreement with that. I would like to leave this place too. To have this person sit there 
and say, oh my God, they are barking. He can send you a thousand letters, right? And you have a responsibility to receive those letters and do something about it. At the end of the day, we are in agreement that he would like me to leave with my dogs. I am trying to build a house. I don't think that's accurate. I cannot I cannot build more arborvitae, I'm not right? Asking. And and if a, and if the dog house hey, does, hey, hey, you're, mi you're missing the point. Yes, Kate, the arborvitaes are not the issue. I think they should stay there. They should feel comfortable. Uh, they should. They are. Stay. They are the barrier Wait, that you I were finish, trying Kate? to. They are Kate, the barrier that you're Kate, trying to suggest. Can I finish? Okay. I'm talking about a visual barrier in the fence that you already have because the dogs sit in front of that arborvitaes and right in between the fence and the arborvitaes that's where that's where the i just just from my one time of looking so i, I can't i can't say this for all the time um but i was thinking um a, a visual barrier of like you know very thin um bamboo or something in that same area where the dogs hang out like between the arborvitae and the fence that you've put in for protection before the driveway just that that area kind of to the porch and right around that corner, if they were visually obstructed, I think it, it may not bark as much. Now I could be completely wrong and nothing would change. I just thought that might be a simple, inexpensive solution to try to try it in the meantime, you know, to see how this th this could work. And, and, and so so I appreciate that. And I understand that, that a visual barrier in front of that might be somewhat of a solution. But the reality is, is, is that I have put my dogs behind the wood, the, 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 the enclosed upstairs, and I can hear them barking. Yeah. I want to pause for a second, Kate. One second. Yes. I, I think I understand the board's perspective here. We have to do something more. Whether it works or not, we don't know. Correct. You're suggesting that you can hear them forever, but for around regardless of what you do, but we have to do something because it's putting them in a position. And I, it's, I'm coming around to that, that something, at least some effort has to be put in here. So I Absolutely. think, I think that the board is suggesting that it's, it could be in our hands and in, in your hands right now as to what next step we could take to show that we're trying to, to alleviate this. It may never be totally silent, but Understood. it's, so so what so they've suggested what could be the next step to show the the effort in, in a in a I would I would way. be I would be happy to put a visually obscuring mesh in front of in in around the fence that would be I would be happy to do that because that and might then, stop the triggers that if if there's a trigger that gets them excited people or sound or cars maybe that let's see if that helps it may not, but it might, you know, and if it, like you said, if it's a fabric or something, it may absorb the sound a little bit more than, you know, just the direct, you know, and maybe, maybe the dogs see people at the store or getting out of the car or driving by, or it might be something like that that triggers. And if it was uh, a fabric or something like that, that, that just blocked that view a little bit, it wouldn't, I mean, they may still, cause they have wonderful hearing. There could be all kinds of other reasons why it still may bark, but I thought it would be a, a an initial solution to give it a try. Oh, yes, and I, and I and I think I think to your point is is that you're pointing the finger at Theo, but the reality is is that I have four big dogs and they all bark. So this is not just a one dog problem. This is actually a four dog problem, and I will tell you why is because oftentimes I actually take Theo with me. Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Hey, you're okay. only allowed to have three dogs in the town of Deerfield. Okay. Um, by our bylaws. So you're already in violation. We're asking you to work this solution through. Um, okay. I understand you are here temporarily while you rebuild your house, but we have to deal with this. We would like you yeah. to please come up with a solution. Try it. All right. Um, I would know, be happy. I would be happy to I would be happy to try and um that that mesh solution around my fence. Fine. Um, with this board, would it be at the pleasure of the board to continue the hearing or close the hearing? Can I get some advice from uh, Matt Provencher, our counsel? Yes. M Matt, do you feel like we should close the hearing or continue the hearing depending on the solution? 
Um, so good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me here. I, I think what it's been discussed from a housekeeping perspective that makes the most sense is that the board is willing to consider continuing the public hearing to afford Ms. Clayton Jones the opportunity to make efforts to remediate the issue on her own initiative, thereby not, and so the board doesn't need to enter an order, you know, in lieu of an order, we'll see if voluntary remediation is effective. So I, I think the board is looking to continue the hearing at the request of Ms. Clayton Jones through her counsel to another date and time certain, at which point in time the board can review what efforts they've made and then at that point in time determine whether an order is necessary to abate the nuisance caused by the dog barking. It sounds accurate. Okay. Sounds, yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's extremely fair of the board. Thank you. Great. That'd be great. Okay, so I'll make a motion to um, continue the hearing, but we have to set a date yes. at this time. So. Um, what what amount of time should uh, would it do you think it would take to implement the suggested uh, voluntary um, screening? And that's a question for uh, Kate or or Mr. Cohen. I should have it up in thirty days. Yeah. Okay. So should we look to like forty five days or sixty days to to once the screening is up? see if it makes a difference oh yeah right does that make sense so are we that's good so maybe two months out yeah yeah we're we looking at uh and get the calendar yeah early june um i think we should do may because this is the beginning of april so i think End we have may. the last last 29th. week of may yeah um yeah, let's see i i will i will not be here at the last week of may What's that again, Kate? I will I will not be here the last week in May. Oh, you won't. Okay. So first week in June. Uh, like Casey, yeah. when's our select board meeting in June? First well, one okay. is well. the twelfth, I believe. Okay, let's let's continue it to June twelfth then. Yeah, that'll Makes give it. plenty of time. Does that work for everyone? Mm -hmm. Does here. Okay. Twelfth would be great. Sure. So let me re begin again then. Um I I make a motion to continue the dog hearing until 6.15 p.m. on June 12th. You second to, that. To, yeah, to allow. To allow uh, voluntary measures to be put in place. Thank you. I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you so much. I appreciate your willingness to, to look at that and Oh, no worries. Go. I'm I'm Thank a you. willing and I'm a willing participant and trying to do my best. Thank you so much. I really Thank appreciate you. the effort. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Thanks for the suggestion. Thank Goodbye. you all. Good night. Thank you, Matt. Thanks you. Thank you, Matt. You're, you're very welcome. Nice to see all of you. Um, anything else I can be of assistance with this evening? All set. <laughs> We're all good. Thank all right. You. You Thank rain, you very much. <laughs> yeah, I think we could. If you could stop the rain, I think we would be happy. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll work on it. I'll see what All I can right. do. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks. Um, okay. All right. <sighs> we'll go from there. Okay. Next item on the agenda is notice of awards, request for proposals, South County Senior Center Administrative Programming Space. Um, I believe you have two notices of award. Yep. This is for the oh, same for administrative the space yeah. mm -hmm. and the so these same the use at Holy received. Family. Yep. Okay. And let me just say right off the bat, Chris did a great job on this. Um, he, when we got the bids, we reviewed them. He had a team of us do it. It was me, Jennifer, and him. Okay. And the two bids we received, the RFP had, it was, it re required certain things. And each one of those bids fits the type of the the description in the RFP Great. that they were going for. Perfect. So his recommendation is that the board award oh. according to the the uh, language that he outlined. And do, does the just um, a quick question? Does this um, uh, is this a specific period of time, or can it be until needed, or? Like I didn't know if there was like it had because of the procurement you had to do it again in we a year and a half or periodically periodic um, but at least but for the foreseeable future of, yes. okay great that's great I'm yes. good with that so it's open ended 
Well, I think when we finally do a lease, we will put a number on it, mm -hmm. but because right. we'll do a lease and you'll have a lease period. Fine. That um, makes sense. Okay. That's right. great. All right. Right. Sounds so good. we'll put a lease period on it when we publish the leases. We'll send out drafts of the leases for the two vendors. Okay. If, if you guys award tonight. So okay. I'll make a, uh, a motion to um, authorize the chair. Authorize the chair to sign the notice of award with the Holy Family Parish and with the Delta Sand and Gravel Inc. for acquisition of real property via lease for South County Senior Center. And I'll second that, and then I want to make a couple of discussion comments. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the Holy Family Parish um, lease agreement would be for $1,200 a month. Yep. And um, the one for the Delta Sand and Gravel property in Sunderland would be for $1,890 per month. Yep. And probably the reason why there's a difference in price is because um, the building in Sunderland is at the complete control of the senior center and the other one is for specified hours during a week. That's specified correct. Specified hours. Yep. Yeah. Space. Absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I, I think we'd have a better idea once we, um, it, in a, in a couple of weeks, whether we can, when, when the church will be available for mm -hmm. use. So. Based on construction. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, so. and this is um something that the, uh, the, the three town agreement pays for right that's correct yeah. yes that's correct yeah just wanted to clarify that for any no, that's right watching well, yep 50 yep. yep. yeah yeah exactly our, according yep. to our memorandum of understanding right all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn ness aye great thank you very much it'll be good yeah. to have a at least thank not have to get kicked out He's a little not bit. Thank here you, to Chris. thank, but yeah, thank Chris. You did an excellent job. In the minutes, he'll see it. Well, it's nice that we don't have to worry about a did, space yet. Did you skip over this thing here about tablets? Or what did I skip over? Consideration of tablets. Oh, yes, I did. I'm sorry. I didn't I know if we that. to do that. With yes, um, sorry. I did skip it over by accident. It's okay. You can skip it. I don't have an answer. Um, so we were hoping to be able to give you a price difference. Initially, we thought they were going to be around 600 tablets, but tablets have gone up in price. They have. And depending what, on what they do, too. Depending on what, what they, they do. Air. And so we explored tablets that we already owned. Mm -hmm. um, we're not sure that those are going to fit the bill. So okay. it's probably going to be that we're going to come and ask you again for okay. a increase in the uh, allocation for the tablets in ARPA through ARPA okay. but I don't Stay have that for now was there I don't have that yeah. this, that difference right now there was previous approval of tablets but the, the price has gone up is that there the was issue? estimate yeah. for tablets but the price has gone up and okay so and you guys have done this in two other instances where you've had because sometimes prices change um mm -hmm. I think one of them was the the HVAC monitoring system that's in the right. highway garage. Um, but I'm hoping I can have this information for you for Tuesday. Okay. Um, see you then. Your Tuesday is start. The Tuesday meeting starts at 4:15. We already have one the procurement that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So, if this is a, if this is a quick enough vote, would you be willing to take that up? Yeah. Yes, That's absolutely. Okay. Meeting. So, what time does the meeting start on Tuesday? 4:15. And then when does it end? It's a joint. Finance it's a committee. joint budget meeting. Oh, okay. So I've got what happens is, is you guys start at four fifteen, and then four thirty, the joint budget well, meeting. Kim and I will. Yeah, you can handle it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Can I ask one other, one other question? I know I think we should continue this and let you get your S, your cost quotes. I didn't want to give you some open ended number that I wasn't right. sure about. Uh, yeah. Is there a specific tablet, or can a tablet from Dell versus a tablet from? Um, some other vendor versus an Apple tablet. Um, are there different choices or is there one specific tablet that works? The, there are different choices. Um, what they landed on was Samsung tablets Perfect. with certain Think amounts of memory. Inside. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. To be so, able to run the program and, right. and yeah. connect with their computers. Obviously. Yeah. Right. Obviously yeah, a lot of memory, a lot of uh, information probably. Is in and in one case there, the building commissioner's tablet um, I was asked if we could get a higher end tablet in the event that we needed to have a little more capability for that tablet. I honestly think that's a reasonable idea, but having capability doesn't mean we're going to be able to put 
an air card on there mm -hmm. right away. You know, we may have to wait, but that's the person that's going to be doing the most inspections right. and Thank whatever you. possible, right. being able to upload the information to the system will be helpful. Yeah, for sure. But for now, I, I honestly think we're not just based on what I spent the hour or so I spent with Brenda last night about, or yesterday afternoon about budgets. I think having a piece of equipment that's going to work longer term is more important. Than sure. Okay. okay. All right. Those are done. Okay. So, uh, so the next item on the agenda is signing the memorandum of agreement for uh, food vendors at Berkshire Brewing. This is based on the same uh, kind of system that we set up with Treehouse. Berkshire Brew would would then would we would bill at the end of the month the fifty dollar person inspection. Okay. Um, for and vendors. That'd be great. I'm glad he's open to that. That's yeah. really helpful. So um, I would take a motion to support uh, the memorandum of agreement. I'll make a motion to support the memorandum memorandum of agreement um, protocol with respect to mobile food vendors at Berkshire Brewing Company, 12 Railroad Street, South Deerfield, and uh, in between the Board of Health and the Town of Deerfield and Berkshire Brewing. Second. All those in favor? Jim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Oh. Um, I just, uh, it was really nice that uh, Chris did that. So I want to make sure that we give him credit. He negotiated that. Yes, he did. He did a um, job. He followed up on that. And, and that removes the responsibility of paperwork in our office by quite a consideration. Yep. Okay. Um, ARPA projects for review. Casey, did you want to talk about that? I did. So I would actually went through and asked some questions with Brenda go over some of the ARPA projects that we have. And because I have to do the ARPA report relatively soon. Yeah. Um, it was an email, right? I think I saw it was today. an email. But it's yes. not, is it not in the packet? I, just I don't want to make, think it, I don't I'm think it is. pull it up and I'll just- That's fine. Read. It's Perfect. okay. Yeah, we it's don't okay. need it. Just... Essentially we've got, right now we've got expenditures. And give me two seconds, it's just coming up. Um, so our expenditures, for 123 to 33124. Um, we've had 7,000, actually 9,700, sorry, 9,700 for the permit software. Mm -hmm. We've had, I want to say, we'll have additional amounts. We will have tablet. additional amounts. We're still paying those bills, but at the close of that particular What's the subject line of this email? Um it was just today, right? Yeah, I just got I, yeah, so yeah, many building I don't remember. People, town administrators. I know, there's a lot. Um hold on. Oh, I see it. It's now available coronavirus. Is that the Yeah. I think that's I think it. that's right. Okay, our expenditure is 4123 to 4 for 31124. Yep. Okay. 9330. Yep. 9730, I think you said 9730. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because and of course now I can't and then my police, police. <laughs> I can't see my own email. 7330 <laughs> for the police. Um yeah, so so HVAC. those are our, our numbers right now. So what um, do we have left though? We have a lot. A lot. The but dump body. Some of it you had Without the, obligating via a signed contract, you had obligated amounts. Right. right. So what I was trying to do was start the conversation so that you guys, because I was listening to the to, to the discussion on the 27th, and I was trying to give you guys an idea of, okay, this is what we spent on these projects, mm -hmm. about what, 82,000 for Leary Lot. I still can't yep. find my email. 48,000 uh, for, for the dump body. So, but so you've got those listed. What I was hoping this would do is allow you to think about what we've got and maybe we could schedule another discussion um in the next week or so, maybe two weeks, so that you could nail down some of the items that you're out that are outstanding because I know Tim's been interested in allocating funds toward the 1888 building, but based on the budget conversation on Monday, I was I wanted to give you some idea of where we were. Right. 
Um, how much was the dump body DVD? It was uh, 48,000. It was 48, 420, yeah, 48,000. 412. So we've spent um, like 143,689.32 at the moment. Do we, um, did, has Chris under the new, um, I know we don't have a contract yet, but has Chris estimated how much we're going to use on the Leary lot still? He is working on an estimate. It has fluctuated because of some of the changes that came up. And so he's been working with Jeff to nail that down. Okay. He's given us a couple of updates on that. I didn't ask him for that this morning or this afternoon before he left, but it's it was some somewhat in flux. So this is why I just wanted you guys to start the conversation. What we could do is we could take this back, this question back to Chris and see if he's nailed it down more because things have changed. I mean, they just went through their planning board um, secondary review because of the changes that came up with the project. Um, and I think everything went fine based on my conversation with him and Amy. Okay. So there are some changes they can, they've now gotten blessing for. Um, I just want you guys to have this in your minds because if it comes up again next week, you at least know what we have for expenditures. Mm -hmm. And you can think about how you want to approach it because I am guessing that's going to be part of that conversation. Well, yeah. So just to be clear, the thing that says assistant town administrator there is you. That's you're running. Yeah, I need to change my name. I forgot to change. I was going to ask Chris a question, and then I realized he's not here. No, <laughs> um, no that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. I just I want to nail down. I want us to be solid on how we're going to spend our money mm -hmm. um, by the end of the summer. Okay, because it has mm -hmm. to be appropriated. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. By December. Yep. But this is a good way to start the right. because yes. it's come up more than once. I I'm, just I'm, wanted I'm you up, guys to have a yeah. like to work on the church building. There's so, there's a lot to do. I mean, we can certainly I, have places to use it, but yeah. Well, I want to see I know as well. I know there's gonna be some um we're we're gonna need some a little bit of money for do, redoing the floors in the in the sanctuary part of mm -hmm. the church and stuff. Right. So I, I right. and that's easy for us to just vote and mm -hmm. get it done. And I would be so excited to have the availability of the church. So let's um let's keep that discussion going and but okay. Don't worry about it, Casey. I just but, want you to have this to start. That's, that's yeah. where I was going. I was trying to listen and come up with things that would well, help you next week. What what I want to do is if, if it's all right with you both, is to make sure that we have this nailed down by July. Okay. okay? Yep. Because I don't want us to have any issue that, that we're going to give one dime back to anybody. Yeah, I don't right. think that we have to worry about that. And I don't, I would say August is a better date because July is just, that's yeah. early. Okay. So do you, when do you think you might have um, an estimate on the um, flat, flat fee architect? Kind well, of I don't, uh, we're, we're having our second meeting at the 1880 building one o'clock on Friday um the the proposals are supposed to be back within like week to 10 days okay um, so then we'll um we'll turn that around as quickly as possible you know authorize casey to award based on the conversation with our first candidate if they don't accept the terms then we'll go to the second candidate okay um, but it should be you know so I, you I feel more our, comfortable i believe our goal is to have a, a contract awarded by the end of april okay yeah all I'm right. just saying that if we do, if we make a decision by August, we'll be able to spend every dime of ARPA money one way or another. Okay. I am confident of that. All right. I just, I just wanted us to have some yeah. Yeah. drop dead date yeah. that we could work with, so that we don't lose um, right. any, any. We want to optimize what we're, what we're doing. Right. Um, so great. That's fine. Um, next item on the agenda is state revolving fund asset management grant project. I have a question on this, Casey. Yes. Just reading the um, the email that came. Um, That's the one from right Justin from, from Justin from DPC Engineering. You know, just saying that we did get the grants. They are you know before we thought yeah. we had them, but now they're solidified. Um, page six of this application includes guidance on the required local appropriation, which should be, should be reviewed part of annual meeting. The local pro appropriation is required to proceed with the project. Um, and then if you look at page six, it says local appropriation. The applicant must demonstrate that sufficient funds are available to cover the total underlined both eligible and ineligible project costs. So I don't know if we have to vote the total 200 
thousand. I mean, obviously we know we're getting the grants, but I just didn't know if language needed to be set that we needed to vote like the whole thing and then get the grant. Like, you I, know well, what I that's mean? the thing. The question it's is, tricky. it is tricky. And so he basically says to us, we need to go through this piece, yeah. but and they talk. don't make it clear to us. Right. My thought was we could confirm, we've talked about it. It's actually, it was discussed on Monday, I think, um, when we were talking through some capital. Um, we could confirm that the funding source is available. They are. Yeah, I mean, they we're, are. We're we know that. they are. But I just didn't know if it needed to say um, at town meeting, we um, we appropriate and, and, and that the um, state is looking for a vote from annual town meeting that we've appropriated $189,000 or something like that. Well, Because they say eligible it. and <laughs> ineligible costs. Because we haven't voted that amount. I mean, not that they're not going to give it to us. They are, but I think they want to make sure that we can fund the whole thing. Kind of like the um, you know, we did with the USDA stuff. You had to vote the whole project knowing that you were getting all this grant money to cover it. But that's just my question. I mean, I know we have voted and we have sec secured the funding for our costs. But if you read it, right, doesn't it sound it kind does. of weird? It says exactly that. And right. so I have the, same the problem. issue for us is... It's almost like asking for an appropriation. Right. Not but that we're we going to use it. Right. But we aren't. Because so we got the grant my, award. And so this is my thing. Is Maybe Lisa could help with this. or I, uh, I think we're going to have to at least get some clarification from Justin. Right. Because if this means we have to take it to town meeting, well, we don't have time. Right. So This came in after the, the warrant closed. Unless yeah, I, we just, call I guess I didn't meeting. see that originally. I, I just don't know what's required for a vote. I mean, town meeting, I think, would approve it because we already have the money. Um, not that they even need to approve that money because one's coming right. from, the, from the other fund. But um, but I think they just, I don't know. It seems weird. So I, that, that was out of the that's left field the for me. If, if that's what they're saying, because when it says bond council, right. I mean, they're assuming that, that you're appropriating, but right. we're not. Right. Right. And the other thing about this is, we can still do this, yeah. Um, but we do need clarification. Do we have to? Do we have to show that we have a hundred and eighty whatever thousand right. it is? Right. If so, we could say we have yes, our. We do. Yeah, we we do. exactly. We don't need yeah, to go yeah. to town meeting. We Correct. can pay for it. Correct. But we're going to get that money back. Correct. So we don't want to. Well, actually, it actually, yeah. it never, it never leaves our. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I'm just saying that. But if they need a vote showing that or, or some some note yeah. that we have the financial wherewithal to cover it, we do. Casey, why don't we do That's it that way? Lot. Why don't we do it that way? That It says other designated body. Just, oh, if you were like a um, a water district or a town meeting, city council, water supply right. district. But the designated body. So that's the clarification. As appropriate. Point. What, what I would say, body. Casey, is just, just what... Tim and Trevor are talking about we'll we'll vote it our upper money towards that. Or the enterprise or. fund can pay for it. Exactly. You know, we have enough temporarily. Right. Right. Yeah. temporarily. Yeah. Right now, we the, have the, those the money, funds available. The money never actually gets spent. Right. Because if we get we already have the grant mm -hmm. and we've been awarded the grant. So, so we'll talk to Justin this week yeah. and figure out what's I, that's up. what I was gonna ask yeah. you. That makes sense. I had trouble reading it. Yeah, let's just but talk I didn't about know it. if you had let's, had a chance let's to not talk worry about going to town meeting. Yeah. We can either cover it with ARPA grant or right. enterprise fund money. Or, or see what, what the requirements of the state either way, are. Whatever they need to see if they need yeah, to be a financial state. Yeah, local appropriation. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't have to be. Either way. If the money exists and we, it's already available, right. that's my concern. Exactly. If it's either way, well, it's a vote of you guys. It's either the select board or the sewer commissioners would make the vote. Yeah. We have, a, we have money available either right. way. And so that was my concern is I, right. I had trouble with it. And I thought yeah. maybe you had talked to Justin. No. I also didn't want to leave it hanging. So what we could, what I can do is get it on the write myself a note to put it on the next agenda. Yep. That's good. Would yep. that be good? Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is Secretary of the Commonwealth New Chapter Update, Chapter 39, Acts of 2024, and Act Further Regulating System of Sewers in the Town of Deerfield. So it seems like they approved it. Signed. And signed. Yay. And this one, um, I just wanted to, I think I read this before and I saw this, but now I'm trying to find it in here. It also stipulates the thing about not to exceed 25%, right? I believe that's in the beginning. Let's see. Um, 
don't quote me, but I mm -hmm. thought it was in the beginning. It should be right in the beginning, Tim. Yeah, I'm looking. I, 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 don't, I have one page here, and I'm. I know we looked at it a million time. times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know what? By striking it is, words is the whole us. thing printed? I don't know. I I have um, just one. You have? I only have one thing too. I think I Thank saw you. it in the. Uh, oh, you know what? Email that. Let me pull my. Let me see if I can injured, find it. In my so that was an injured because thing. The town shall by. It's vote page determine. fourteen yeah. and fifteen. Here it is, section five. The town shall vote. Uh, the town shall by vote determine what uh, proportion of the cost of the system of sewage yeah, there it is. and sewage it's disposal shall pay. Not more than twenty five percent. Right. But yeah. not more than perfect percent. Okay. Yep. So that it, I thought get... it was there when I. No, read I, I I remember reading it and then I just yep. couldn't find it again. Yep. So we're good there. That's yeah. great. Perfect. Do you need anything from us, or is this just a note? No, we just want to make sure you great. knew about it. Thank I you. do need one thing. You and I need to, Trevor. You and I need to work on getting uh, regulations. Yes, I've been talking with uh, him, uh, with David about that too. So we'll yeah, we're working on that. Okay. Okay. Got to get that going. Um, next item on the agenda is um the Burns family run, uh, and then the Sunday. Sunday on May 26th at 9 a.m. And then on May 30th is a frontier class of 24 parade from 5.30 to 5.50. I think it probably only takes like 10 minutes, but. Right. Um, yeah. And the run that was very small last year, they just, you know, they yielded to traffic and used the sidewalks, no yeah. police details. No, okay. No. Okay. I'm good with that. All right. Does somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve both the uh, Burns Run and the um, Class of 2024 uh, Short Parade. Okay. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank LGI. Thanks to the Class of 2024. I know. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Thanks. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Yes. And congratulations oh to the 2024. I cannot believe that. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> Yeah. We're moving okay, along. This is the time I feel old, folks. Yes, <laughs> um, right. Letters of support. Um, we t uh, talked about all of We talked Casey. about that one earlier, right? Yep. We talked about them both earlier. One, I'm going to, the OSHA fire department mm -hmm. ones will just set off until after town meeting. Casey's too busy. And I'll work with Casey as long as that's okay with you yep. on the um, disaster aid bill. And you've got a nose. Do we think we need to do it faster than that? I mean, busy or not, if we need to get the letter done. We oh, no, it. the fire department one that they they extended the um, comment oh, period okay. until I think it's like the first week of June. But okay. that's why I said the end of May. Yeah. Um. So not even to worry about that. But uh, what we're going to have to do is when we do address it, we, we should get some other people involved because um, if, if we don't, it's 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 going to be within six months, if it, everything will be implemented and then within six months you have to comply. It's just unreal. So, I mean, the cost and the, and the hassle, but I got to reach out to our fire department too. And, you know, maybe we can go through the STAM listserv or something, Casey. Okay. Cause I, I just don't think people are paying attention. It's one of those things. There's so much stuff coming across your desk that it's hard, but this is right. But I always, when they do changes, I always check, and it does. It costs a lot of money. Um, we don't have Chris here for Leary Lot, right? We don't. He, I think he had given you in his report, he's got some information. Okay. Um, do we don't have any appointments or resignation? Uh, do, uh, do you want to talk about the, you have the personnel so yes, I can uh, certainly hearing. talk about that. Okay. Um, I don't have my memo in front of me. I can go grab it. No, here it is. If you want, I'll give you my copy. Is this the notice of hearings thing? Do yeah, like this? the notice of hearing. So the notice of hearing will be published on Friday, and essentially, and we had to fix it. Thank you. Thanks to Chris, who caught something that I had wrong. Um, but essentially. The outline of the changes, there's two changes we're asking for. And I had asked you folks to put this on the warrant. The first one is the personnel bylaw changes. And I wrote, to be fair, Tim, there's a lot to get through. So I'm sorry, it's two pages. 
That's okay. Um, so basically what I did was I wrote a memo to try to explain this. Um, the bylaws were enacted in 1964. They include the composition of the personnel committee, the duties, the it memorializes a classification plan, benefits, and policies. But it isn't up to date. And a bylaw is a very difficult way to, to run a personnel management system because you only have an opportunity maybe twice or three times a year to make a change. So a more effective and efficient way to meet legal requirements now is to have a manual. So what this does, this request for a proposed change would essentially replace the current bylaw with a different one. Um, one that has very similar elements, but that is more succinct and really points in the direction of using a personnel or human resources manual. Um, so we actually got there through a combination of things and we got a community compact best practice grant um, and worked with the Edward J. Collins Junior Center for Public Management to review our bylaws and review all the policies that had been promulgated by the board. Um, and they basically came back and said, you're missing a lot of policies. The bylaw is top heavy because it's hard to be fluid. It's, it's hard to change. And they suggested that, that it changes be sort of couched in a slightly different manner than what you actually see in that bylaw language. And one of the things that I thought would be a difficult thing to get past is completely changing the bylaw and adopting language that gives authority to directly to the town administrator in the Bible. Um, there is a way to manage that, but I worked a little bit closer after I read the report and talked to our labor council. I thought a good way to handle it would be to take the working elements of our bylaw and combine them with the purpose of creating policies through a manual. Um, and so essentially what you see in the language that follows, it's an attachment, um, or the, I'll finish this part, but the primary intent is of a bylaw change is to comply with the current state and federal legal requirements. Um, it would allow us the ability to adjust and management being a combination of the administrative folks like myself and the board as the appointing and hiring authority. So the proposed language would also change some of the responsibilities for the personnel board. It wouldn't eliminate the personnel board. It wouldn't eliminate the, response, the, the key responsibilities of the personnel board. What it would do is it would memorialize a something I see the board, the select board and personnel board do, which is collaborate on changes they want to discuss. But in some cases, the personnel board could start the process, hand it to the board, and then discuss it amongst you through a hearing process if you were going to make changes. Um, it also, notably, there are two notable things about a change like this. Um, the responsibility to address a wage and classification plan are maintained. In other words, that is something that has to be in the bylaw, or in, the, I'm sorry, not in the bylaw, in a manual. But the responsibility for the personnel board and select board to review those things is maintained by virtue of memorializing the fact that that has, that those duties continue. Um, the compensation plan would become a policy though. It would be something that town meeting would not approve. Um, currently, they approve two things. They approve the class comp and they approve the budgets. And the budgets are built based on the classification compensation plan. Um, you guys would do that through, you would do that through the process you go through now. Um, the membership to the personnel board, I think is the biggest question. Um, 
one thing that we've run into and we meaning me and the rest of the board members because we only have three besides me um, and I'm an ex officio member is we've had a lot of vacancies um, but there's also a question I don't know if anybody remembers this from the MMA conference but there's a question of inclusion here so when I was talking this through it occurred to me that maybe having an appointment from the select board, an appointment from the moderator, and an appointment from the finance committee would be a fairly manageable way to get three the three main resident, resident members. Um, but the town administrator's ex officio, and one of the reasons is I represent management. Um, but we've never had an employee on the personnel board. And I think, I don't know if anybody remembers, but one of the key takeaways from the MMA conference was inclusion and finding space at the table for everybody's views. And I, I've been thinking about that ever since. I had always thought it was a decent idea, but in this case, I think it's an opportunity for us to bring the people who are affected by the bylaw to the table to discuss policy changes. Um, I don't know how everybody's gonna feel about that, but I do know that it's a much more democratic way to get input from people. How how will the employees, will the employees vote for a- Yes, elect, okay. they would be sure. elected by, bylaw employees would elect a representative to sit. Okay. Um, I, so, I would just wanna make sure that there was- um, So that would make four people? Four people, by well, five people. I don't vote. Um, four people. Um, so that's one element. I don't know how personnel is going to feel about this. They have a meeting on the ninth. Is you were talking about section A right now? Yes. Okay. So they have a meeting on the ninth. Why don't we um, put this off until yeah, to, um, yeah. to the next meeting? I'm asking but, you to approve it. I just wanted to go through okay. the next uh, section B. Um, yeah, the, the question is um, be approved by both. Okay, Julie both, has comments in there too. Both the personnel and the um, select board set the uh, compensation schedule, correct? Right. Yeah. You would do it I as part of a review. I just want to make sure that that was still, we were yeah. still involved in Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, That's what I mean. I'm trying. The idea is to maintain the things that are working, but the yep. intent is pull the benefits out, pull the policies out, because yep. those are the least manageable things. Right. Just just make sure that um, you let us know what the personnel. Oh, I will. Committee so they have fills. a meeting on the yeah. 9th to review this. All right. And then they have a meeting on the 23rd. They have to have a hearing according to the current bylaw. They have to have a hearing, so they have that on the 23rd. And one thing I will say is there is another change. Well, why don't you put it on for the agenda on the on the 17th then? For you to review it? Yeah, because you'll you'll have the input, mm -hmm. I'll have um, input from, from personnel, now. and then we can have input on the 23rd. Okay. Is that, is that okay that with you sense? guys? Yeah. Okay. Sorry with me. I just have one observation, and I don't know that it's... I don't feel it one way or the other about it, but having a personnel, having an employee, a voting member of something that, you know, voting on their own compensation, I, I understand the idea of including them in the discussion about what the policy should be. That makes sense to me, but I'm just raising a question about, number one, you've got four members, so you, can, you increase the chances of a 2-2 two -two tie, and the employee is voting on something they have to direct interest in, if it's the comp plan. Yeah, it seems like a comp so, of interest, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just raising maybe an ex officio. It doesn't get implemented by them, though. Management implements. Yeah. So, so the, the, the it's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just it's a it's good question about, and then it doesn't put us in the position of, you know, overturning something that the employee voted yes for. Right. I get it. That's yeah. why we're talking. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. But I'm glad we're doing this. Thanks. Yep. Well, this has been I, a long haul. It's been a long haul. This has been under discussion for over 10 years. Yeah. It hasn't been 
And one thing that I have discussed with council is, so we can't really have something ready to go, go, because we don't know what town meeting is going to do. Right. What we can do is we can have a framework mm -hmm. that we could be able to provide because, and a framework would be an outline. And that's what basically what personnel is going to want to see us be able to communicate to town meeting that these, this is the elements you, you would see in a manual. Um, when do you want to discuss um, spe the special events by, uh, material? Uh, it's not on the what's, agenda what's, tonight. What's that again? Yeah. You know, oh. uh, need just to read that, a schedule. Read I'm that. seeing Allison on, so yeah. she's probably yeah, interested in what night we're going to talk about that. I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do that for like May 1st? Because then that's after... I just want to see it all and read it thoroughly. Nice. Are we close to done with this meeting? Do you want to, is it May 1st? Okay. Okay. Al Allison, we're going to uh, be ready to talk about it on May 1st. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry that it's it's not like we're it, we're so inundated before town meeting that. No, that's fine. I I'm just here. I was listening. I was driving. So you're good. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Then I don't feel so guilty. I was exactly. feeling guilty. Not no. By all means, we just uh, not to make an excuse, but there's so much going on between now and town meeting, and th that way we can allocate time for yeah. sure on Look, the first. Maybe. In the meantime, yeah. if you need me. Yeah, without having to, you know, we can we can focus is basically what I'm talking about. Is that okay, Casey? Mm -hmm. So put it on for the 21st. I mean, for May 1st. May 1st? Yeah, May 1st. Um, is there anything new on the geothermal bylaw? Do we want to talk about that? Anything? I don't remember us having anything on that. We had it on as a placeholder. I think Tim had asked for it, but I didn't know where we were with it. Okay. Um, it just gives us the opportunity if something comes up to talk about. Okay. Well, we're moving on because the sleet is getting nasty. Yeah. Um, updates on the campus buildings. So I have one request. Um, I, as people know, I sent out to check myself um, the makeup of the review committee for the 1888 building process and I had suggested four names and a to be determined from the TBEC committee and um, if you need me to I can run down the names quickly one is Vern Harrington who is the former principal of Thayer Street Associates yep one is Joseph Matty who's an independent architect who That's is willing sure. to work out of Shelburne who's willing to work both of them free um, to participate in this, which gives us an architect and a con contractor's perspective on what questions we need to ask these potential candidates who qualify during this process. Then myself as the member who's shepherding the project mm -hmm. um, and uh, Christopher Dunn, who's the planner who yep. will need to be involved in this process. And then um, a fifth person from the T-back. Okay. Um, I agree um, with that. I agree with that too. Do you want us to make? Yes, a I want you to vote. Okay. We'll make a motion to approve that list of people that would uh, be sitting on the advisory committee. I will second that. All those in favor? Tim Elchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank, Thank you for you. shepherding Thank that you. through. And then I just want to m mention one thing that I, I should have mentioned earlier. Um, our human rights advisory committee process sort of stalled. Yeah. I've reached out to Kate um, Lawless to ask her to just discuss with me what happened uh, from her perspective and see if we can't get that back on track and you know Thank get you. it in place so we'll we'll try to I think one of the things that caused it to stall is we had some policy suggestions and I'll work with Casey on this too um and whomever she designates is the potential person to do it we didn't actually finalize anything before we ask these volunteers to serve on this committee and that's partly my fault I, I take ownership of probably jumping the gun um but if we can between kate and myself and and uh casey and or whomever she designates can bring a, a suggested policy manual to 
the select board for review um, and legal counsel for review. Maybe this would, you know, once they get there, they'll have what we're asking them to do in front of them. And and then we yeah. go out and look for volunteers and, and set up good the process. Plan. It's a good plan, Tim. Thank right. you. All right. Thank you. Um, Casey, is there anything you want to say in particular uh, on your report? I've read, I've read, uh, Chris's. you know, Chris's and yep. Yep. Yeah. we know how busy you I are. Just, at the so I had a training session today and yeah. I've been working on several things that if you looked at my email, you'd cry. I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing a lot trying of emails. Trying to keep up with them. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, hoping to go back and read them one time. Of my email, so you know yep. that I'm working on Yeah, things. a lot. Um, I actually had a couple of things. So the annual warrant... Um, we're still refining that, and I had made some changes. There's some comments that are in there. I printed another copy up for you guys because I fixed a number yep. that was in there. I read through all that. Is this um, the new one? That was yeah, yep. the one that me. was sitting there is the new one. Mm -hmm. And it has not gone back to council because there are a couple questions, not the least of which is the personnel bylaw change, um, that I think when you meet with finance committee next week, there'll be some robust discussion. Um, but one thing that I needed to tell you about that is the in the warrant, and it's actually in the memo about the bylaw changes, um, the classification compensation plan does have to be voted because I council reminded me, um, the AG's office is going to review any bylaw change, and if they aren't done in 90 days, we don't have the class comp voted. We don't have a place to give every to incorporate the step increases and stuff. Okay. So that has to be voted. Okay. Um, and I do have. I wanted to also let you know that there is only the words a sum of money for the F FLSA corrections that we have to do. Um, that is, I don't have the number yet, but we're working on it. Okay. Um, so we're hoping to have that before the 17th at the very least. Now, the 17th, you guys really have to approve and be, be ready to sign a warrant because we have to post on the 18th. Okay. Um, and then. So when will be the final playing around with it so that we can actually vote it on the 17th? It's not going to be the 17th, is it? I think you're probably going to want to vote it on the 17th and sign it yeah. by the next day. What I meant was, when are we going to get to see the final version so that we can read it and discuss it? I want it. to be able to send this out okay. to council. Yeah. Um, the so the changes close. that might, I, yeah, yeah it's good. essentially good. done. Yeah. One thing I think you guys should look at is the tables that are in there. Um, in the comp plan? In the, no, I can give you the comp plan. Oh, no, um, the comp plan about. isn't in there yet, but I'll put it in before I say I thought it was the this other thing. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Yeah. You, you probably have the comp plan yeah. in yeah. the budget book, although if you want me to email it to you, I can. No, we have yeah, it. I, was just saying. I had given it to you in the personnel menu memo. Right. Yeah, that's, I, uh, that's what I was just checking. Is that? It's just, I didn't copy and paste it into the warrant yet. Yeah, okay. Um, That's the one thing that if there are questions and changes to the personnel bylaw, mm -hmm. then we would see that in motions. Right. We wouldn't necessarily, because the only time I could get personnel to meet when they had the availability was the 23rd. Okay. Um, thank you, Casey. I'm not trying to cut you off. No, items unanticipated. I don't have any. Um, this is not to spend time tonight, but on the regular upcoming meetings, you have November 27th, which is Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Not going to happen. I had a feel. I put the dates in, but not I gonna figured happen. we were going to make some changes. And yeah. and also um, the second meeting in December, I was proposing the December 18th because um, the following week is Christmas. Yeah. yeah. So um, just just so that you can officially change that, Casey. So what do you want me to change? Do you want to cancel the 27th? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. And also um, and December 18th. Yeah, because I got to cook. I mean, I, there's just nothing. I, I need my sticky buns. So yeah, I we, we got to make sure she's free. She and then free. Um, I was suggesting us to have the 11th and the 18th, and then that's it for December because um, 
Christmas is the is would be normally our normal night. Yep, it's on. That's Hanukkah and Christmas both on the twenty fifth. So okay, just just so you can change no, it. I can do that on the change it on the our you know the blurb on the bottom. Now isn't isn't the eighteenth the official Grinch holiday? <laughs> oh, uh, might be, <laughs> might be. I don't know. No, I don't, this is, sounds like a good plan. <laughs> oh, I'm just there saying, is one thing I I'm, want. You I'm not coming. I'm cooking on Thanksgiving. I mean, no, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving is forget it, you guys. Mm -hmm. not gonna got one thing. I yeah. do have one thing since we are talking and we normally talk about a fall town meeting. Um, maybe you guys could start thinking about it because yeah, we need usually to. Usually end of October or sometime in October. Well, one thing that's going to be an issue is we need to, and I mentioned it, we do have um confirmation that the Stillwater Bridge plans have been accepted. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah. So we need to get that. So Columbus out. Day the process. Clum Let's Columbus Day is the 14th. So I would suggest either the 21st or the 28th. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I think the 21st is better, but because mm -hmm. 28th is too is kind of close to Halloween. You know how that yeah. is. Yeah. But, um so oh, I also just mentioned Casey at uh those um conference things i'm going to hang on to i'm a pack okay. rat so i just i know they were in with the telephones to get rid of i just want to hold them for a bit yeah that's fine. we'll ditch them if we need but yeah and we you know what if we can just use them i had everybody. asked pat if we could use them um she hadn't gotten back to me by the time yeah. i she left fine. and i ran in so we have the so we have all new phones in here we now have all yes new phones. and they work and they they do work. I have so, to create the outgoing message again. So um, feel free to I was call, call office, Casey with any it. of your concerns all day, every day. There's <laughs> no excuse now. <laughs> 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 right. No, we, it was funny. Right after that conversation, we started having trouble with the phones again. And yeah. I basically You're walked like, over I'm, to Brenda and I'm said, done. <laughs> I'm done. We're paying for this. Yeah. Okay. So, no, it's great. And we, I saw you guys were all training on it today. So yep. that's great. Yep. Um, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Please. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessai. Thank Please you um, very there. much.